what we're going to physically, what we're going to actually be looking at, okay, if we can take that one little piece, think about me taking this, because this is what it's showing you, okay, it's showing you like a cross section, like they might have done just straight through here, okay, and all of these fibers, okay, these cells that I could like pick up and just peel, okay. So, when we think about skeletal muscle, all right, with skeletal muscle, this is muscle that is allowing us movement. Is that correct? So, that tells me that based upon the shapes of the muscles that I see, Okay, think about the deltoid, think about the pec, think about the abdominals, okay, think about your glutes, think about your hands, think about your quads, okay, think about these muscles that are the big ones that we can actually like feel, okay, and if you were to take a part of your body and just hold it over that muscle and make some movements, all right, do you not actually feel that muscle doing something, okay? That means that because we now have, hopefully, this idea that these cells, long cells, okay, fibers, they're going to have to have the ability to do this number. They're going to have to be able to go contract, and relax. Now, that's telling me that huge long cell, that one little piece, okay, wish I had a string or something, okay, that one long piece, all right, it's going to have to have the ability to go contract, relax, contract, I need that term right now, relax. Okay? Hmm. How is that going to happen? Trust me on this. It is the coolest process ever. Okay? And for us to understand it, we're going to have to get it down to one little section of that entire fiber, that entire cell. And you learn about that and everything that's involved, it's going to help you even more understand about all these ions, the calcium, the sodium, the potassium, all of that, okay? So it is a really cool process. Now, the skeletal um, muscle, we need it, of course, for the movement of our body. We kind of talked about, you know, those deeper muscles because those pictures in the last chapter, okay, how the deeper muscles, they definitely are giving us, you know, our support, the ability to stand up, the ability to sit up, you know, all these different things that are going to help maintain our posture. That comes a whole lot into play. Now, the other cool part about that, the other ability to maintain our posture, it's going to not just come from the skeletal muscle. We're going to find that it's going to involve some of the special senses, too. But that's in part two. But it's really kind of cool. We need them for respiration because the muscles that are in between the ribs, okay, their structure that they take in between the ribs allows for us to inhale and exhale. I need to do that about 10 times. Okay, and say relax. Production of body heat. The more muscle mass you have, the higher the body heat. The hot, you know, that means that that maintenance of the body heat is helping with the homeostasis of our bodies. Communication. All right. Seriously? Really? Are you kidding me? Okay, I know you're thinking really weird. Okay, but yeah, communication. And then, of course, being able, you know, to move the facial muscles to talk and so forth. 
constriction of organs and vessels. Smooth muscle. All right, which we'll get more into in part two. Contraction of the heart, that's the cardiac muscle. And we'll get more into that, of course, in part two. But don't forget them. I'll hit on them very briefly, okay? But um, we'll discuss those more in part two. So what are these properties that we're gonna find? We're gonna find that the muscle can be contracted, excited, has the ability to be extensible and elastic. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Well, this is what skeletal, this is what muscle needs to do, okay? Whether we're looking at skeletal muscle or whether we're looking at smooth or cardiac, it needs to be able to contract. When we say contraction, contraction is telling us that muscle has shortened. There's going to be some type of force, okay? It's going to make that muscle short. Excitability. Ah. What do we remember about the plasma membrane? Now, this time, We've got a cell that's like going to be long, okay? So our plasma membrane, think about, you know, the cell just being this long string, okay? But if this is our plasma membrane, what do you remember about positives and negatives? It is more negative on the inside than the outside. And this is due to what again? The NAK pump. Well now the sodium potassium pump is gonna help us when those I with those materials move, okay, and we have to bring it back to its resting state. So what are these little things <laughs> that are gonna get to move back and forth across the plasma membrane? Ions. So once again, we're going to be dependent on ions, okay? And we already heard sodium, potassium. Can you think of any others that we've dealt with? H pluses, because I know that's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about those H pluses. Those are going to be more dealing with like something being acidic. So those are going to come into play when we deal with the fluids of the body. Calcium, that's good, okay? Those are the major players at this point, okay? So our ions, if we can have them move back and forth across that plasma membrane, if you remember this setup, positive, negative, that creates that little bit of electricity. Do you guys remember that? Okay, so therefore, being excitable. Now, it has to respond to a stimulus. What could be a stimulus? Now, <clears throat> let's kind of keep it on our level that we're thinking right now with the skeletal muscle, okay? So, think about what skeletal muscle can do. What could be a stimulus to make it do what we're wanting it to do? Because it's voluntary. Now, if we think about skeletal system as a whole, okay, let's say right now, what am I doing? Is that a voluntary movement for me? Where does the stimulus for that come from? Any ideas? Do you happen to know, like, 
why or where this okay it's really cool all right brain when we think of brain we think of this huge okay cerebral part right okay oh people have to tell you oh you're way too cerebral blah, 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 blah. Yeah, man, 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 man. Quit using your brain so much, all right. Now, to walk, voluntary, conscious. Okay, so now we have to make sure, okay, that we're going to have this motion that takes place. That means consciously I've thought about it in some way. You're thinking about it right now. Because they're waiting for 12.15 and me to say, oh, break time. Get back to 1230. So we have stuff that comes from what we think of as higher order brain skills, brain thoughts. Okay? Higher order thinking. Other parts of the brain are going to be involved. Now, what else can you think of might be a stimulus for the skeletal muscle? Okay, we've got reflexes that are going to have to take place. So, reflexes, definitely, they get really cool. All right. might that have been? Could have some pain? Are you thinking about the butt on your tush right now? The chair on your tush right now? Until I mentioned it. So you're feeling what from the chair on your tush? Pressure. Do you see how I'm Getting some ideas about the movement. Okay, so now we're going to have a stimulus that our nervous system is going to pick up. One of the things that you find is that embedded in the layers of the skin, for example, okay, the layers of the skin, you're going to find different corpuscles, free nerve endings, that sort of thing, that can pick up some of this information. All right? And they will be helpful in responding to the muscles to get the muscles to move. When we incorporate the higher order thinking, okay, that actual conscious movement, that is going to be stimulation from these higher order neurons, okay, in the central nervous system. Reflexes, we think about reflexes, where does the stimulus for reflex come from? Any idea? That was a reflex, right? Where did it come from? Does it actually have to come from your brain? No, doesn't it come from your spinal cord? It comes from the level of the spinal cord that will integrate it. The, it'll send information up for the brain to register it, okay? But the actual reflex comes from whatever level of the spinal cord it comes in at. I'm cool with that. So, nervous system. Here's the thing. You cannot have, this is for skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. Which one am I leaving out? Cardiac. You cannot have muscle contraction for skeletal muscle 
and smooth muscle without innervation. The nervous system is the reason that skeletal muscle and smooth muscle will contract. And I'm leaving out what? I'm leaving out cardiac. 